Hello, welcome to a new Creature tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to use the new Live Band Physics feature in the Unity game engine. And to start off with the tutorial, I'm going to look at the Fox character. This is the demo character that we're going to use to instantiate the Band Physics in Unity. Now, the first thing we're going to do is open up the anim rig graph and take a look at how the rig is constructed. If I play the animation, you can see there are a couple things that are wobbling right now. The tail in particular is moving up and down as out of years, and that's because there are bend physics motors going through both the tail, years, and parts of the back. All right? Okay, so we are going to export this character out, and the way it works is that certain band physics motors that satisfy criteria, a certain set of rules, are going to be exported out into the metadata JSON of the creature animation tool, the, the, the export directory, and then you'll, you'll be able to call in to the new Unity plugin to instantiate these band physics motors live within your game, so you can actually run Unity's default rigid body physics solver to to basically simulate and animate them live and interact them and interact it with your gameplay. Okay, so what you do is actually really simple. You still go through the same process of exporting out in your game engine. It's the same process, and as long as the bones satisfy these set of criteria, it's all on on the documentation page. So please go through and read through it carefully but essentially it has to be a chain of bones with Ben's physics and they must not have any children so they should be dangling bones okay and we do recommend that you keep it to three to four bones because again the physics solver that creature employs itself natively is very very fast and very sophisticated and stable but when you actually use band physics in some other game engine it will be dependent on how reliable and stable that physics solver is okay so your mileage might vary so we recommend you d you keep a chain which is just three to four bones for stabi stability reasons and there should be no gaps between the bones this is again a limitation of third-party engines physics solvers not creatures but that's how it works okay so once you've done that you just export out your character sorry export out your character into unity and i'll see you in unity okay so welcome to unity and first things first you notice when i exported the fox out in the export folder there was a metadata json it's just called metadata but please remember to rename it to a json extension if you want to load it into unity this is a limitation or requirement of unity to have json files or text files or in general json files with a json extension so that they can be read in as a text asset okay so make sure you rename the metadata into a json extension and then you just drag it into your assets now how do we set this up well what we do is you i have this set up already for you and let's go through each slot so i have the creatures json connected already that's that's what you know that's the default unity json and if you want to use the flat data the binary format you connect it here and you check the use flat data asset okay so those are the basics which you should already know if not please go through the previous unity tutorials now the thing you should care about now is also to connect up the creature meta json and that will be your metadata file that you export it out into your directories the moment you connect that up and it, as long as the band physics motor satisfy those three set of criteria you should immediately automatically just get these things populated for you and these are essentially the band physics chains that have been identified and exported out automatically by creature so it's very simple okay and they show you exactly all the different motors in the different animation clips that you have and what you do is you just check active you go in and check active for the ones you care about now take note these motors for this one in particular it's it's in relation to the animation clip run okay and so i've checked all the ones with run now when you instantiate the motors they're instantiated with respect to the animation clip you care about don't worry you can you can instantiate any set of motors from any animation clip 
and you can you can play it back in any animation clip as well but i'm just telling you that each animation clip has its own set of motors so you have to tell creature which motors you care about from which clips if that makes any sense right so anyway so i'm instantiating the animation clips from the run cycle right here so i've checked i've gone in and checked all of them and you can set the different stiffness and damping values of each motor as well now these stiffness and damping values are again different from the ones you're familiar with in creature these are the stiffness and damping values associated with whatever physics solver the game engine is using. In this case, I'm using Unity, so you should go read up the Unity documentation on how these values play out when you're using these kinds of physics simulations, right? So they're, they, they're, they're, they're values pertaining to the, the actual native game engine physics solver, not creature. So familiarize yourself with that. Okay, so once you've done that, this is really easy. The, the next thing you actually have to do is you should create a creature game controller. Again, if you're not familiar with this concept, go online and read the documentation on how to set up a creature game controller. What I typically like to do is, well, what you, what you create is you go to game object creature and then there's a creature game controller. But what I typically like to do is to put the game controller under, under the creature render. Again, you can put it anywhere you want, but I like to put it there. And then you just con connect up the different slots that you care about onto onto the game controller so for example the game controller requires the creature renderer slot so you connect it up with the renderer that that it knows about okay and then lastly you should also create a a, a test agent a creature uh, sorry a creature custom agent that again is documented in in the online documentation so go read that up but i'm going to go through the code with you right now to see what's going on so let's take a look at the physics test agent. This is the creature game agent that I have created that will basically create the band physics live. It's going to call into the new creature runtime API to instantiate the band physics. And it's really simple. You just in inherit from the creature game agent class and you don't really do much to be honest. Let's see what we do. Well, in the public init state method, all I do is say, hey, game controller, please create the band physics from the NM cycle run. That's all it is. And once you've done that, let's run the Unity game and see what we get. Okay, so this is the Unity game running. It doesn't look much different, but if I go to the scene and detach myself, if I move this, oh, sorry, if I move this character around, you notice that the tail is wobbling naturally, right? And that's because it's actually running live Ben physics now. It's all reacting naturally to the, the interactions, if you will, of the user. And you can do whatever you want because this, this, is, this is actually Unity physics running live within the game engine, within your game, sorry, within your gameplay. So that gives you a lot of possibilities. I hope you're really excited by this. Okay, so that's really all it is. But before we finish, I need to say one more thing, which is typically in 2D games, you're always going to be flipping your characters left and right because they're going to be moving left in the left and right direction. When you do that, you typically apply typically apply some kind of negative or flipping scale to it, right? But once you've done that, what, you, what you're going to find out is the physics, the bend physics is going to be out of sync with the flipped character. So if you don't do anything, a lot of, a lot of things are going to go wrong. So what you should do is after you flip the character, this is a standard trick, you know, standard way to flip the character. After you flip the character, you should also create another set of band physics motors. And don't worry, when you do this, it's going to erase the current set and instantiate a brand new set. So essentially, you should always instantiate a new band physics motor, a set of band physics motors immediately after you have created a new uh, orientation, if you will, or after you flip your character. So you just do this and it should just work. So let's let's give it a go. So let's go back to the code again, sorry. Uh, in this case, I'm saying if I get an input of F when it, or flip, when a player presses F, it flips the character and then I and then I immediately create a new set of band physics and, it, and everything should just be as normal. So let's, let's take a look. Okay, so here I have the character. If I flip it, see? Everything's fine, right? And I can go detach myself and I go in and do the same thing, right? Again, the tail is wobbling very naturally. 
based on life physics, based on life unity physics. Okay, all right. So this is really the end of the, of the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope this new feature gives you lots of new possibilities in using Creature in your interactive gameplay in Unity. Thanks for watching.